So in the last video, we talked about how you can set a base color to a model so we can at least like draw it to the screen. But what we really care about is how the surface of the model um, can behave as if light is shining on it. So we need a new way to describe our, our surface because before all we were doing was we were moving the bunny into place and then assigning a color to it. Um, but what we need to do is find a way to describe our surface. And we do that through a surface normal, which when you first come across it, feels like a very abstract and hard to understand topic, especially if you have a background in mathematics. And first dealing with normals, it feels very abstract and it doesn't feel tangible. But working in lighting, um, normals become very, very useful. And for me at least, um, after I've used them a while, have become quite intuitive to use. So what is this surface no normal? So a surface is, you know, you can define as like a wave or just wherever arbitrary um, places are in space. Um, but you don't know how, if you just take some point on there, you don't know how that surface is changing over time. So what you do is, is you create a new vector that is length one, and you basically point it perpendicular to the surface. So you can see um, here at this graphic, um, as the surface curves, then the surface normal changes pointing perpendicular to that surface. Um, and so that will quickly tell us um, which direction the surface is pointing. Um, and if you can think of like standing on Earth as it's rotating around, um, if, if you're the surface normal standing on top of Earth and you look during noon directly up um, at the sun and blind yourself, like it's gonna be very bright. While whenever the sun is setting, uh, there's gonna be less light hitting you um, at that time. Um, so you can kind of think of, of normals being a person standing on top of there. And they are length one, and they're made up of um, x, y, and z. Um, but then once you just take the length of it overall, it's going to be um, one. So here on the right, um, we've got our buffers that we're creating to put in our data. And what it looked like before was before we were just returning positions and elements for our bunny model. So this is the WebGL that goes into creating the buffers and doing all that work. Um, but here we're creating a normals buffer and we've, um, with the bunny model, it comes with the uh, normals pre-computed, um, which is handy for us because we don't have to do it. You can compute them on the fly, but for here, we'll just be using the pre-packaged data. Uh, and uh, once we go to our shader, uh, you can see now we had, before we just had a position and now we have a normal attribute. And as I said, it's a VEC3, so it's a three-dimensional vector. Um, and what we need to do is we need to pass it down to the fragment shader from the vertex shader. Uh, so we define a varying value of a VEC3 V normal, and we set the V normal to be that normal. So it's just a little like, okay, take this and assign it. And then it gets passed down to our fragment shader down here. Now we've done that, um, but something's happened to our normal. Uh, it's actually gotten squished, because, or potentially squished, because you have, if you have two points which I actually have a graphic for, if, if you've defined on a, on a point two normals going out in a direction, what happens between the two shaders is that varying value varies between those two instances. So when it varies, it does a linear interpolation. What that means is that if you see here, this magenta arrow in the middle might have a length of 0 0.8, so it's no longer truly a normal, it's not of length 1. So the first step that we do when we're working with normals, once we have them in the fragment shader, is to normalize them. So here you see we normalize the V normal. And we have to do that every time, uh, and it's done on every single pixel. That way we get a true normal that we can work with. Now, normals are uh, basically defined from negative one to one, is kind of the range. Um, so here I'm doing a little bit of math to transform it um, to a range of zero to one. Now this is useful because uh, whenever we're doing lighting, we can actually visualize that. Um, so now it almost looks like our bunny rabbit is lit um, because it has colors going on there. Um, now there's a crucial flaw here, which I'll get into in the next, next recording, um, but the normals change with a camera, with a model moving right now, which is bad for lighting because then the lighting is fixed to um, if you're trying to shine to the top and you flip the bunny upside down, then the bottom will be lit, which is which you don't want. Um, so in the next video, we'll cover how to actually transform that normal. Um, but here you can see, as just like 
if you want to do some creative coding and you don't want to mess with lighting too much, you can take, for instance, if I take the original color and add it, it's going to be very bright now, which is all white probably, so it's going to be way too much. Um, so what I'm going to do is multiply it by 0 0.1, and I've screwed up the math here. Oh, it's a VEC4, so we'll do it XYZ. So that's too dark. We'll do 0 0.8. Um, maybe 0 0.5, and you can actually go and adjust these values a little bit. Let me see if I can dial it in to be somewhat interesting. So we'll multiply by 0. So there's the original color, which is kind of a blue. Let's turn it to 1, and then dial this up a bit. So you can see like now I, it almost looks like a lit bunny just by playing around with some of the values and seeing what I could do with it. Um, so in the next video we'll figure out how to start to use this as a real thing.